Good evening. Welcome back to Real Talk Blackburn. Fun fight night special. <laughs> Your host, Yasser Amin. Tonight we're going to be talking about our local government yep. and the upcoming national elections. I've been joined by Asim Mahmood, a local activist, a concerned resident, and a fictional, sorry, a factual content writer for a local newspaper. On my other side, I have Shokat Hussein, Labour councillor for the Blackburn Ward and for the Blackburn Basketball Ward, shall I say? Master Len Daisy, please. Thank you. Thank you both of you for joining us today. Right, Shokat, you've been a busy body. What have you been up to recently as far as work is concerned? Just recently, uh, it's nothing with council, but I've just come back from Pakistan. Um, went to visit um, Kashmir. That's where I'm from, Mirpur. Right. We, you'll all, uh, all be aware that we had an earthquake there about a month ago. And I just uh, wanted to go and have a look around and see how we can help. There's a local group who fundraising. And inshallah, hopefully, we will be able to help some of the families there. So it was a... Uh, I opener to be honest. You see a lot of things on TV, right. but seeing it first hand is, is something totally did you, different. Did you attend it alone or did you go with any particular group? No, I went alone, but there was a few who had been there before me and we sort of met up and had a few meetings with the local engineers, uh, government officials and a few other people and went to site visit a few people. Excellent. So just do a bit of groundwork to be honest. Are you working with any of the, the charities that are set up? In the yeah, UK? we're looking at Muslim Hands. We're working closely with them. I right. uh, also visited Court, who doing a lot of work up there already. What exactly is it that you're doing there? Well, we went to have a look, like I said, uh, some of the villages that were devastated by the earthquake. But the main village uh, is like a bit of a tourist attraction. A lot of people are going right. there. And also distributing some money. So a lot of individuals have gone there and handed out their own zakat and money there. Uh, but we felt there was a few other villages that were affected, weren't getting the same attention. So we've concentrated on them. So what were the most affected regions? Um, Sankikri was right. totally devastated. Is it's that a bit within Azad Kashmir? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That's, uh, Azad Kashmir, very near Jatla. Right. Jatla the main road which is the main attraction originally where everybody was sending the videos from but the actual village where the people lived and the houses weren't affected that much right. um, luckily it was happened during the day uh, had it happened at night I think there would have been a lot more casualties but there, there was also news of an after shock as well not just Short one, after. I felt a couple myself while oh, I was there. Know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And they're still going on. I think uh, the government said not to build anything for a few months. Right. But one of the problems we've got, or I found, is that there's a by-election going on there. Right. And all the attention has gone towards that from the government officials and the politicians. Right. And to some extent, these victims have been forgotten, to be honest. Really? Yeah, there's not much activity going on. So that's why it's really important to support these charities. Uh, absolutely. The They've done the right groundwork. They've done a lot of surveys, um, took a lot of details. Uh, I met one of the officials and basically they haven't got the finances. Right. So they are relying heavily on, on charities to help right. out. Coming Shoka, back closer to home. Sorry, could I just come in there, Shoka? Yeah. There's a conflicting kind of view being put across currently about the issue in Azad Kashmir with the earthquake. Yeah. There's a lot of charitable work going on. A lot of people are going over. A lot of charity work. Money's gone over. A lot of charities on the ground. Yeah. At the same time, there's been conflicting stories where people have been sending social media uh, messages, videos where they're saying they'd, there's no need for sending any aid. What's your thoughts on that? Aid as in, uh, well, when the earthquake happens, I went there and I've, I've met people first time. The first one was rescue, trying to rescue people, make sure there's nobody trapped. The second one was relief, so they make sure they've got something over their head, a tent, um, and something to eat, so there was a lot of food supplied. After that is rehabilitation, so basically building houses back for them to move back. Uh, we're at that stage now, so they don't need aid as in food or tents or something. What right. they now need is practical help 
in reconstructing their houses. I think total demolishing, I'd say it's less than 50 total demolishes, but there's a lot of damaged houses um, which need help. So uh, the aid I was talking about in people, just in general people like me and you would want to go and see this if they're there. Locals have gone there and they've come across families and they've, they've distributed money. Excellent. Right? Uh, but it's not enough to rebuild, but it's, they've given them some money. Sure. But that's been heavily concentrated on this San Kikri. So uh, uh, has, has the reconstruction then started already? No, it hasn't. Uh, the government, because still having aftershocks, so right. they said it's not really safe to start, start rebuilding. Right. But I'll tell you what. So what, where, really, do they, where do then people lie then, those people that are homeless, etc.? Well, they've all, what, been what, issued, they they've all been issued with tents. Right. Um, they're quite worse style and um, I was really, I when I went there I was really expecting something totally different but these guys have sort of picked themselves up, dusted themselves down and got on with life. Excellent. I was absolutely impressed because I went to one family and their whole house was demolished and he had two grown up children and I was told that village wasn't affected. Uh, I got the messages from England because people uh, relatives lived there and they said no our village is all right i got the same message in pakistan when i was there but i get getting calls to go and visit and eventually i did and i actually found this house it's on the outskirts it's totally demolished and he, he had two our grown-up daughters as well as sons but two daughters mainly and he said loads of people have been down surveyed it looked at it offered help said they were going to come back nobody actually ever come back and he's actually started, and I was really impressed because uh, to me, living here, when you see something demolished, usually the digger goes in, mm. sweep it up and take it away, and it's a fresh start. The guy's actually with his bare hands gone through the rubble, collected um, the bricks that were, weren't broken, and he stacked them up. He's actually recovered all the bricks that weren't broken, and the girders, the banters, yeah. the door, and I was really impressed. He sort of cleaned the whole thing with his bare hands. And now he started, he said, I can't wait for these people to come yeah, back. Absolutely. And he's yeah. actually started digging yeah. the foundations. And he said, sure. I, yeah. I that, need that, one that, room yeah. for the winter for my daughters. Just my one other question uh, stemming from that. Yes, I appreciate in, in adversity, the human mm. kind of spirit always yeah. uh, shines through. And it, it never ceases to amaze us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I guess you can't forget the, the resilience of the people of yeah, Kashmir. That's what I'm saying, absolutely. I think it's important to recognise that in this case of a natural disaster, yeah. uh, it's not something that they got control over. Um, I, I think it's but really it, important that the work that you're doing, yeah. uh, I, I guess... It's a shame in a way, the people who are more... You, it just sort of low, the ones that were affected are the poorest. The poor is always the case. Yeah. One of my things would be back in, we had the earthquake back in 2005, that which yeah. was obviously a much larger scale large, earthquake, much, much which larger. affected a larger area. And many people were killed. I think it was up to 40, 50,000. Nobody people. ever knows the full We figures. weren't really sure how many, but it was a lot of, uh, a lot the of, death toll was high yeah. and the destruction was uh, severe. Yeah. But at the same time, back in 2005, I remember a lot of money was raised. Yeah. And, uh, but ultimately, a lot of people at the same time felt that the money wasn't wisely spent or didn't reach the people that it should have got got to. So what's the situation uh, now? What, what's well, your advice to people? We are sort of worried that the same thing doesn't happen again, especially our group who's raising the money. But back in 2005, the actual location where it happened, to people actually to physically go there was very, very difficult. Um, it was high up in the mountains, weren't it? And yeah. um, mm, yeah. people struggled. This one, people can actually access it themselves. And that's to me, is a big yeah. difference. And to be honest with you, the scale of what happened then and now is a million miles away. Yeah, it's it's what, what would, you, no, what would no, your no. advice be to people if they wanted to give money to help the people? They've got to do the what checks. Would, I mean, to be honest, well, well, I went there, I've seen it first and I spoke to Police guys, I spoke to some guys working in the army, uh, some politicians, some journalists. Uh, and the best advice I got from them was the journalists. They actually took me around and they said, uh, one of the things, right at the offset, they went and supplied these tents. The army sort of 
or the government gave them out. And as soon as they went out, the guys who were well off, well known in the village, you know, the they got people, to it quickly. They got to it and they took two hundred yeah. tents. And they disappeared, yeah. and then the army yeah. got involved, and they actually oh. got every single one of them back. Mm. You know, they've actually yeah. made them get their wagons out, mm. fill them up with petrol, and took them all around night yeah. to get them all back. So it it's heartbreaking. There's good people and there's bad people. Yeah. I I took somebody down. He said his property was damaged, and if I could have a look at it, mm. and uh, I said, all right, so we fixed the time. I took the car, he sat in my car, and I said, before we go to his house, I wanted to see this other house mm. that uh, I was going to view. And he said, yeah, went down, and it was a, it was a widower, um, and I went in her house. So she only had one room, and that was totally demolished. That's all she had. And when I come back, and he said, just take me back where you picked me up, because my house isn't as damaged as much as hers. She needs more help than me. And that to me, I sort of thought, you know, the guy's honest here. Yeah. He's been bugging me all this time to go with him. Yeah. And then eventually he's seen something with his own eyes and thought, hang on, that woman needs more help than I do. Yeah. And he come back and he said, forget my house. Which is really refreshing to be honest uh, when you hear these yeah, stories. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I think uh, what, um, what we're trying to allude to, or well, what uh, us are trying to allude to is, whose responsibility is it to really do the, the, the homework uh, or something. I guess, uh, from a personal point of view, uh, no, when I you're giving know. money to somebody, yeah. uh, or a charity, uh, it's ultimately their responsibility to do that. We've, um, we've got to do the do, cost do, sequence and checks. Yeah, yeah and the checks. The, checks the, the way we've done it is mm. we've done the checks ourselves. The Shnafti card's a good one, because right. it tells you where you live. So we actually had... You know, when I said uh, the rescue, the relief, the relief bit, we had loads of people coming from everywhere right. uh, asking for food. And it wasn't a big thing, but the Shanti card actually tells you because they were also saying, well, we live over there. Sure. You know, yeah. how do you cross reference that? It's and just a method of verification. My, my, so, specifically, my question is uh, people here in the right. UK, yeah, yeah. Right, what okay. type of due diligence would you expect people to do? Here, or do, you, or do you not expect them to do any due no, diligence? No, no, absolutely, they do it. What, the way we've done it is obviously we've, we've gone and contacted people in Pakistan, used to oil Kashmir, and cross reference with what information we have. So we've gone out and seen something, took the details, then we've asked other people who might know them and their circumstances. Uh, one such instance has happened in uh, Sankikri, where one of the families we come across, I come across, court come across, who obviously wanted aid and wanted them to rebuild their houses. We later found out they were really well off. Mm. Um, In which case, what did you do? Well, we've made up a list of people, potentials right. we can help. Yeah. Um, we cross-referenced with locals, because, and not just one local, a few locals, to give us that mm. information, whether what we've got, what we've been told is truth. Right. And then we're also working with Muslim hands who have their own list. So we cross-referencing with them. If, right. if we happen to hit the same property, the same people, sure. then to us, that's a pretty good chance that they yeah, actually the fact that you're help. working together yeah, to, it minimize, helps us, helps to minimize us. the effect. I mean, if we went from there, to be honest with you, it'd be very difficult just to sure. find out. So you've got to work I, with people from there. Not to beat a like, kind of dead horse on this, but you mentioned Muslim hands a couple of times. Mm. There are many other charities on that the is. ground doing uh, a lot of good work. <laughs> How does a person here differentiate or choose between these different charities? Or is it not a question we, of choosing just give freely without any... No, 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 no. What would you suggest? Well, one of the first things I personally objected to was just handing that money over to somebody. Um, I'm totally against that, but there's a lot of red tape. I didn't realise then, but I realise now that for example, if we say collect a hundred grand here, yeah. mm. nowadays it's very difficult to take that to Pakistan because of the money laundering scandal. Sure. So, uh, unfortunately, a lot of rogue people use these sort of instances to send black money over to get it white, if you will. Yeah. That's just facts. So, if I put in my account, for yeah. example, people could then ask me where I got the money and I'd struggle to... Yeah, justify absolutely. so all that I didn't realize that 
So Muslim hand is some yeah. charity we yeah, worked not, with before. Not, not to answer uh, uh, the question that you um, sort of directed towards mm. Shokat. Yeah. But I think uh, what Shokat's trying to say is you place your trust in a, a charity that is one, well established. Secondly, one that has uh, a lot of transparency as far as uh, accounts and processes are yeah. concerned. Yeah. And also the fact... And worked that, with them before. Yeah, and the fact that um, that are there doing the groundwork and that, can cl- that you can clearly see are doing uh, what they said they're going to do. Uh, moving back to uh, UK Lovely. and back yeah. to closer to home. Yeah. Um, you're a Labour councillor for the Baswell Ward. Baswell um, and Daisy Field, yeah. Yeah. Um, what sort of, what's your day-to-day role uh, as a councillor? What are you expected to do? Well, the primary role for a local councillor is to represent the community. Right. And you're basically a bridge between the council and the community. Brilliant. So any issues raised here right. are taken forward and try and lobby people to right. um, get what we need. Sure. Um, there's also other instances. We're involved with schools. Right. Make sure a lot of parents prefer some schools they can't get them or they want them nearer to themselves. It's not mo- as much a problem nowadays sure. than it used to be because I think there's no more places nowadays than children. Yeah. So there's a lot of competition out there. Um, what do you find the best way of communicating with the residents or your local residences? The best way is face to face. You can't beat right. that. Um, right. That's what I picked yeah. up that many many years ago. Yeah. We do leaflets. Um, sure. We do emails um, to keep in contact, especially sure. if there's something going yeah. on. I use emails a lot. Uh, it leaves a paper trail of communications. Sure. Uh, WhatsApp is up and coming. We have a lot of group, mm-hmm. WhatsApp groups where. There seems to be an impression among some people that um, the council has only come out at the time of elections and the rest of the, the year or the rest of the term, they're nowhere to be seen. Uh, I know that's, that's not the case. Yeah. Um, but um, the, the reason I'm asking you is, <coughs> what is it that you do in between the elections? We do a lot of a, um, activity which in, involves the community. Right. I'm always out and about and very approachable. Election times, uh, it's an old saying that you only see the election times. Sure. But we go to every door on election times. Right. And the idea is that if you need me, I leave my phone number there, you oh. ring me. And if then I don't turn up, sure. then you know, you've got a good reason not to vote for me. Sure. But um, you'll find very rare anybody who's approached me right. not turning up or taking up. Sure. You know, not all is successful, but so typically, if fun. there was a, a concern or um, uh, an issue raised by a, a local resident, um, how would you sort of tackle that? What 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 sort of what's the method or process that one, you would? One of the views um, you learn as experience right. um, as time goes by, and sometimes you'll find um, that one issue raised by a resident. His neighbour might not agree with you, right. uh, as, as I've had a case. I was asked, I'll give you an actual factual case. Uh, I was asked for bullards right. on the footpath because people were parking on, on the footpath and it was blocking their view as they were coming out of their estate, the court, you want to call it. Um, Right from the outset, I said, are you sure if that's what you want to do? Because people who were parking there actually lived across the road. And I was told, no, 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 that one's my brother. And one of the residents come up and he said, that one's my son. And they have no objections whatsoever. So we did lobby in this. And usually when something like this happened, uh, we have to do a consultation. Sure. So everybody's aware. Uh, after lobbying for, I'm just, uh, just going to say, about four or five years it took us, eventually, we were told, yeah, all right, fair enough. As soon as some money, get it our agreement, right? Mm-hmm. So then all of a sudden, uh, he gets a call, phone call one day, it's just before budget, and they could do these bullards. So, but we've got to get them done before end of March, right. 1st of April. So I said, right, let's get on with it. Thinking everybody wants this. Lo and behold, when they all turn up with the bullards and the workmen, all the residents are out from the, across the road saying, we don't want this, this is where we park our cars. Where are we going to park our cars? Sure. And an almighty row happened. Half past eight, I was getting phone calls. Nine o'clock, I turned up, and, and there was a lot of squaring and so on. In the end, we couldn't have them, um, no. because they just but, didn't want them. But sh- surely that would have been a waste of taxpayers' money. That, yeah. in, the, in the consultation sort of period, um, 
wouldn't the residents or the local residents ha uh, have been consulted? Then? They would have been, yeah. But I was, I, I took, as a councillor, you sometimes you have to take a decision. Because I'd been lobbying it for so long and I'd been given these assurances and nobody objected. I actually talked to one or two guys and I know these people. Right. They are that person's son and that person's right. brother who lived yeah. across the road. It was just mm. one of them cases where mm. I was told, you've been asking for this so long, we've got a small gap, we've got some underspend, if you will. Sure. We could do these, but we need a quick decision. And I, well, consulted my fellow councillors and thought, we'll use it there because that's what we've been lobbying for. So, you know, when you say one person has an issue, if it's personal, yeah, fair yeah. enough. If it's like, I want this, and then you've got to go through a consultation period and then... My yeah. sure. question, Choka, would be, <coughs> I appreciate, and I'm sure many people out there do appreciate mm. a lot of the hard work that councillors do, looking at local issues, whether yeah, yeah. it's to do with street lighting, whether it's to do with traffic management, whether it's dustbin collection, antisocial behaviour, etc, etc, uh, oh, a long yeah, list yeah, of things. Yeah, yeah. My question to you is, we live in a very interesting times, and uncertain the times. view, uncertain times, and the view on, of pol politicians is uh, rock bottom. It so is. So you, you councillors, whenever you mention a councillor or an MP, Mm. And uh, you usually don't get a very nice response from people. No, you don't. They're, they're seen in very uh, low regard now. It is. Uh, there's no very little trust. Trust has been broken uh, mm. between the the electorate or the constituents and the politicians. There's a breakdown in trust. What's your thoughts on just that general state of affairs? I agree with you what you're saying because I mean Brexit is one huge issue. Uh, it should have been sorted uh, one way or the other. I was a remainer, but I know of people who who were leavers, went to remain and gone back to leave in yeah. this period because they're just sick and tired of it. Sure. But as a local councillor, um, my sort of get out of it is, is is we do a lot of work which has, is non-council related. Yeah. So we, we do a lot of community work. Uh, predominantly my community is the Indian subcontinent and the other issues like burials, cemetery issues, issue the coroner, and we're always there. Um, we've done Nadra surgeries for ID cards, we do passport signs, and th we're normally there for people when the need is, and especially you know, if somebody passes away, we'll be there if they need any help with either releasing the body or working with the coroner or using the cemetery at weekends. We mm. have them provisions and some of them is council related, but a lot of it isn't. Mm. And people appreciate that. And we get a lot of satisfaction in the fact yeah. that we've helped somebody sure. at that time. So working as a councillor, what do you feel um, the biggest barriers or constraints that, the constraint is that you work within? Is funding really? Ideally, right. you'd want to do a lot of things. Is yeah. that down nationally? You got the fast. It's nationally local, down. Local it's, it comes government. from the national government to right. central government to. Who? I'll, I'll tell you how they did it. How, a, a how, few does that, how does that stop you from really delivering on what you say you are going to do? There's a lot of stuff we want to do. Right. Um, we can't do because of the money. Right. Whether it's playgrounds, road services, um, traffic calming measures antisocial behaviour, if we had more things on for the kids, sure. they wouldn't be hanging around street corners. Mm. Uh, it's stuff like that, which we used to do, but mm. we can't do because there's no funding. So they, we manage, but obviously it adds effects. When you take away sure. services, I, it, it does sure. lose effects. What do you expect uh, um, a local resident to uh, approach you about an issue or a concern that they might have that they might want to raise with you. What's the method of them getting in contact with you? Well, uh, we have posters usually at local doctors or community right. organizations, community centers, right. uh, where we can be approached. It's on right. the internet, our telephones, right. emails. They can approach us anywhere they want and we'll go and visit them if you need to be. Right. If you can't do it over the phone or emails. Um, so we're open. More or less 24 yeah. 7 to be sure. honest uh, some of our needs are later on and people come and approach us so there's there's nothing wrong with approaching us yeah. I, not that i feel it's right to do so but it, it, is it okay then for them to hold you to account when something is or isn't done for that matter 
We, I have a policy of being honest with them. I right. never uh, raise anybody's expectations. Right. I know the constraints, the cancers, and the right. some things are doable, some things right. aren't. Some things take a lot of time. Sure. Um, if, it's a, if it's a really issue, we lobby uh, certain people within the, you know, the party and, and the council trying to get it. And sometimes it, it could take a couple of years. Right. I mean, we've got on St James's Road, just outside the school, see the school, there's a zebra crossing. Yeah. It took us about four years to get that. And a lot of fact finding and a lot of data. Sure. So, I mean, there were accidents, a lot of new misses. We had to record them, build up a case. Then it was down to money. Mm -hmm. But eventually we got it. And the funny thing is, once we did get it, people were still complaining because yeah. then it wasn't in the right place. I, but I think an important um, point that you made earlier was the fact that we are working within the Tory government, the Conservative government. Yeah. Therefore, you're working within their policies, even though you are a Labour well, government. Yeah, well, a local, uh, Labor local, government. local, yeah. Now, um, how does that really impact? The impacts work that you do? hugely. Um, and why is it then important? Sorry, just to follow on question. Yeah. Why is it important that the upcoming election that all of us think very long and hard about who we vote for as a result yeah. of that? There's two questions. The first one is yeah. basically the government, the national government, which is the Conservatives at the moment, they set the budgets. Right. And they go to local government who give us the money and that's the restrictions we have. Sure. And they're political. Right. And you'll hear many times Labour saying, why are we paying more council tax than rich, affluent sure. areas down south who are paying less than us. Sure. But it's politics. The Tories yeah. do that Absolutely. on purpose. Um, they did one a few years ago, uh, you'll notice that uh, people who were unemployed didn't pay any council tax, now they're having to pay 20%. Sure. This was, it just opened my eyes how political things can be really. The government basically used to give us this money, mm -hmm. they sliced it by 20% sure. and said we're, right, we're cutting 20% off that. So we said well how are we going to make up this 20% they said well basically people who are employed mm -hmm. people single moms you charge them 20% wow if you're disabled you're charging 20% Unbelievable. the only people they read ring and said we couldn't charge 20% was pensioners because at that time pensioners voted conservatives so, <laughs> you know, yeah, there's always so it's just they read ring that and Absolutely. that's we had to wear or they said right. basically right. Um, don't let them pay anything, just charge 20% extra to the working classes. There might be an obvious answer yeah, to this then. Yeah. Um, in, in, in your view then, would you so say working under the Conservative government has made your life harder in a lot of respects? If you're working class. Right. Because... No, sorry, I meant working as a councillor. Oh, it's a lot harder for us. Right. Um, especially in Blackburn areas like working, working town class, working class areas like Blackburn, Burnley, Accrington, Will we suffer, right? Um, but That's going predominantly on. because of the, the amount of funding that you're previously yeah, getting, yeah, yeah. you're not allowed. We, well, you, you don't get that; it's not allocated to you, and therefore you can't fulfil on the requirements. We can't. Of we the, the, the weren't getting the same. And the residents no, as you're supposed to. No, and that's true. But coming to this election, coming election. Um, Could you give us a bit of a background as to before, the labour? Sorry, it's it's uh, before you. Uh, go on to the general election because we can you can put a labor argument forward conservative argument yeah. forward the pros and cons of each, each party's policies mm. what i'm more actually interested in and i think some of the audience many of our audience yeah, would yeah. be interested in is on a local level we have um what you might class as a brothery system uh, election for, right. for, uh, for the for the record that just right. being tribal Tribal, oh, okay, okay. and I think many of the uh, audience would, mm -hmm. a brotherly system, tribal kind of system, Class which system. has been brought over mm -hmm. from uh, the Indian subcontinent, mm -hmm. and it seems to uh, rule the roost uh, as far as politics is concerned, specifically at a local level. And I'm just restricting this to Blackburn, because yeah, that's okay. what I'm familiar with, but I'm sure in many other parts where there's a large mm -hmm. uh, Indian subcontinent uh, population, mm -hmm. similar kind of st things happen here. So with this brotherly politics, do you think that is uh, um, dealt us well over the years or it's, it's a dying thing, it's not the case? What are your thoughts on that? It was very strong when I was young growing up. 
um, because I think years back, coming from the Indian subcontinent, the elders decided yeah. whatever it was, or, or the brother, the elders, wh whichever way you want to call it. I think it is dying. I don't think it makes a big difference. Mm. But to be honest with you, one of the biggest brother is the trade unions. Mm. You could argue, because they do exactly the same what a brotherly leader or elder would do. They would pick the candidate they want you to pick and support. And that's what they expect their members to do. But I, so, I think well, it's, it's not really... I, 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 I think that is. comparison is a bit... Yeah. Trade unions tend to be a, a broad church of people. But yeah. so at the end of the day, they will is pick a, bit, a candidate uh, for you. They do you pick to, a candidate for you. And they or they recommend them. They recommend a candidate yeah, for you. Sure, yeah. However, with the brothery system, yeah. I, I, I think it's important we are clear on what we mean yeah. by this brothery system, that you have a caste, a particular caste, brothery, mm who will have a, uh, an appointed leader uh, for whatever reasons, mm -hmm. then that leader will decide which person they're going to, that clan, that brother is going to yeah, vote for. Yeah, yeah. And so is that not really good for democracy? Because what really happening here is that if you have a brothery where one person chooses we're going to yeah. support, for ex for ex yeah. argument's sake, a brothery says we are supporting Shoka as the yeah. uh, councillor for Baswal. Mm -hmm. The whole brothery, the vast majority of them have actually been disenfranchised because they're not, they're not voting on policies um, no. or anything like that. They've not been informed. They've not had a consultation as where many people are keen on consultations, as my friend has already mentioned. Mm -hmm. But there's no consultation that takes place in this brotherly system, except the elder says, "You were, we are all voting for such a person. Yeah. End of story. Who, anybody who knows me and knows my group of friends or counsellors, mm -hmm. we all come from different backgrounds and different clans. Right from a young age. Mm -hmm. um, and I've never really accepted the brotherly system, mm. per se. Um, it might have worked well in, in, in the Indian subcontinent years ago. I don't think it works here, or it shouldn't work here. You should look at the candidate. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, to me. Um, we were in victims of that. Right. Myself. The, the, the question <laughs> I have for you, Asif, but, is... So it's important to understand it. Yeah. I think it's then come back to yeah. it. Yeah. I think it's important uh, to understand. Uh, but I, I would go a, a, an extension from the brotherly system. Mm. Again, just mm. specifically in Blackburn, yeah. we've had a, a lack of uh, Asian females candidates mm -hmm. coming through mm -hmm. i think in the last few years we've had uh, three candidates yeah. who've yeah. come through and yeah. have been selected and uh, uh, elected however well, that's with po positive discrimination po well it was mm. yeah women only selections in certain wards mm -hmm. however why do you think that has been the case in blackburn specifically why just, women have not sorry, been able to come through just before you answer that question asif what do you consider what criteria would you consider appropriate in the selection process? I think uh, the, any party, poly, uh, po so for example, if we use the Labour Party, they, they would obviously, the criteria is that you have to be a member, you have to be able to uh, articulate the policies, you have to be knowledgeable about the policies, you have to show some sort of uh, activism right. towards that uh, right. po uh, party and its policies, and you have right. to be some sort of like uh, inspirational kind of leader, person, person who can lead and represent. And I think if you tick those boxes, and by and large, those, that's the criteria so they do follow. Can you say hand on heart, these people that you consider not to be suitable for their post are not suitable on based on that criteria? I think we can't be in denial about this. There has been this brotherly system which has been in operation Undeniably for many years. And as a result of the brotherly system, mm -hmm. this is not uh, specifically directed at Shoka. I think generally speaking, the quality of candidates uh, councillors that we have in Blackburn is poor to say the least I think if you went around and asked many people many people on the street here they will generally gen generally say that the quality of candidates so well, uh, councillors is poor but at the same time I would add there seems to be this absence of people wanting to line up to becoming good co quality candidates can, can I answer that? Yeah. right I'm gonna answer I'm not gonna say this poor councillors or Oh, I think our audience already knows that. Right. Mm. But what I will say is that if there's anybody interested out there who wants to become a council, especially a Labour Party councillor, come and see me and I'll show you the process. Come forward. 
So mm. it's no good having a dig at people who are already here. Sure. If I'm not, nobody, again, I'm not having a dig. No, well, I'm what just I'm saying is, painting the truth here. What, I would honestly welcome think. people, sure. fresh people who, because politics isn't easy. You get a lot of yeah. negativity it's not at easy. the doorstep. People give you stick. Um, sure. uh, if you get something or you can't achieve something, people give you stick. They give you a really hard time. And it's not mm -hmm. everybody's kettle of fish. Sometimes you're going to be really How are you going to get... So, for, for you, but what I'm saying is if, if anybody's interested, come and see me. Contact you. Come and see us. Again, we'll I agree. show you the process. We'll... Come on, shadow us for but a while. Shoka, with all due respect, you can yeah. tell people the process. Yeah. This is how the process works. Mm -hmm. However, year in, year out, we have election campaigns. And in those election campaigns, they are male dominated. We open up offices, campaign offices, and I very rarely do I ever see any females in there. This, I'll, so I'll, I'll, you're, I'm you're, this acts as a barrier. I was addressing that, I'll address the female. This acts as a barrier for females it to does. If you look around, and I've, I've raised this at regional level, I've been to Bay meetings with the Labour Party. I'm the BAME officer for Blackburn, and I wanted to break this barrier you're talking about. Now, if you look at other professions, females from the Asian background or Indian background, or they're excelling, yeah. absolutely excelling. Yeah. Whether yeah. it's teachers, doctors, accountants, yeah. they're doing brilliant. Yes, we just need to sort of one day somebody break that barrier and look towards politics. But the one thing that sort of they don't want to go into it. A is the hours because uh -huh. um, you'll find a lot of our community wants to have the work done at their yeah allocated times. So yeah, sure. It's not nine to five. Mm -hmm. A lot of it's like evening or late evening work, mm -hmm. weekend work. So it's not ideal for them if they got families. And secondly, is that it's not easy. Like I said, you get a lot of stick. Um, so some of these girls who broke through. Um, with positive discrimination, we had women on shortlist. So we've opened up the route. If women are interested to come forward, have a taste, to come and campaign with us, see what it's like. We have sessions, there's not much take up, but if they're interested, come forward, see what it's like. Ideal, I mean, the way I got it into is, is get involved with schools, sure. governing bodies. It just gives you a taste of what it's, it's a bit like. You, you said, sorry, Shoka, you said positive discrimi discrimination suggests that there is is an issue where there's an imbalance. And the that's national no, you're, you're, not that's national. you're not denying no, the truth. You're not denying the fact so that, that a, it does happen. I mean, but there's a glass ceilings. Yeah. yeah. So, but I'm so we broke them, aren't and we? we? I'm not denying we've yeah. made some progress. The Labour Party yeah. or the politicians in Blackburn have, and the community has made some progress. However, you you have to also acknowledge I know many towns and cities outside Blackburn yeah. where fe Asian female and I'm specifically focusing on Asian females yeah. because there is a really a problem with non-Asian uh, female candidates because there's in abundance and there are many seats. Okay. Um, I'm talking about Asian females where other towns mm -hmm. around Blackburn and further afield that Asian women have broken through this barriers, these barriers uh, many, many years ago. Yeah. And they've got a number of Asian female councillors and some have gone sure. on to become MPs. Yeah. Why, I keep saying to you, why is it, and I'm, I apologise, that I'm not saying this is your fault, but this no. is just a general issue. Why is it that Blackburn has had a specific problem with, with pushing through Asian female candidates? Or in, uh, well, providing well, the we've opportunity? Got the ceiling. We've got yeah. three now, yeah. so we can't say we haven't got any. Like yeah. I said, there's, there's an avenue there that's open. If, if women are interested to come forward, we'll help them. One of them, female candidates, actually stood three times prior and right. lost. We gave her two safe seats, what we would term as safe seats, and unfortunately we lost them seats, mm -hmm. and she got in the fourth time. So it wasn't for want of trying. Um, we've just got to balance this and, and uh, try and get them to the right I think what is important candidate. as well, Shoka, and I'm sure Asa would agree as well, if you feel that you've got a, super, a suitable candidate, I think one, that candidate needs to be brought forward. Yeah. Second, there needs to be a lobby for that particular person because it's important that if you feel that he or she meets that criteria, then there needs to be a, a, a we'll general... Assist her. We'll yeah, assist her. Uh, there, 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 be, a system. there needs to be a, a method in place which the local community gets together and supports this person and on the basis that he or she is the best person for the job, not 
that he is from such and such a class. Well, I think that point yeah. has been made, and if you've, you've nailed that point home, I absolutely See, you made your point. I mean, that. anybody who's some of the females, I've talked to a few, mm. and they, they're happy with the jobs they're doing. Why would they want to take all this stick mm. and hassle for, for what? That, that's what they were asking me, because I'm involved with schools. Mm. I've chaired a governance for 25 years. I did a lot of work there encouraging a lot of our Asian females to, because their ex expectations were very low. When I joined Brookhouse Primary School uh, 25 odd years ago, there were one or two Asians working there. And then I was interviewing people and they had all these qualifications and they were asked, applying for dinner ladies. So I would talk to them and said, surely you can do better than that. And they said, well, I, that's all I want. And then you talk to them slowly and they've started, a few of them they went on to be as teaching assistants. Mm. You know, so it's, it's the expectation. That I think body is broken now because we have a lot of girls going to university. Sure. They didn't have the time. Absolutely. They do now. Um, and we did some work at Randall Street for yeah. about four or five years. That was brilliant. So, and another example I want to give you is that parents' evening, very rarely anybody turned up, and if they did, it was dads. Yeah. Now, mums are there, and every single child's mm -hmm. mum or father turns up to the parents' evening. Because mm, sure. they're interested in the children's education. So, so what's I, I, I think it's important then yeah. for us to recognise that Blackburn is miles ahead uh, of some of the towns. And uh, well, at the I same time, is miles, miles, behind, some miles, miles behind some of the I'm not going to miss miles ahead. Miles behind some of the others. But progress has uh, been made. Yeah. Progress yeah. has been progress made. But my question now would be, not just on a wider level, this is sort of being a counsellor is like, it's a civic duty. Yeah. Where it's not there for, you're not there for a, a big salary, no. big payday yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. It's actually there for doing a civic duty to make your town a better place for people to live in and improve the social and economic position, prosperity of the people who live here. Yeah. Um, do you not feel that young people generally are not encouraged or interested, they don't see the appeal in doing civic duty, hence we don't have a, a vast array of young people who are lining up wanting to become councillors and it's not just councillors there's many other institutions public institutions where there's a lack of uh young people wanting to fill the void but the older people are going to leave sooner or later yeah but i, I slightly disagree with you they might not want to be politicians mm. but their actual ambitions are a lot higher than say when i was growing up they want to go and better themselves they want better houses for themselves. They want to live a better lifestyle. And to some extent, they don't have the same burdens we did because it was like, to some extent, when we were, I was growing up, um, my parents were like looking after their siblings back home, mm. wanting to send the money there. So money was always tight. I don't think now, today's generation have that same pressures. Yeah, absolutely. And they're actually yeah. looking yeah. out and doing better for themselves. Maybe, sure. I, I agree with so, you. And on, the, on the other thing is, I think parents are sort of second and third generations and they realise that. And what you're saying is, I think, when I was growing up, there were women, not many after school clubs. Now there is. There's after school clubs, weekends, and parents are actually encouraging their children to go into it. Like the Scouts. My grandson goes to the Scouts now. And, there's, and they learn so many different things. Sure, sure. And I think within that, something's going to click and they say, yeah, but I that's what I want to do. I can understand the parents wanting to uh, the best for their children and giving them the best start in life, etc. Opportunities. Opportunities. But yeah. I, I go back to you again about, it's sort of having individual aspirations of wanting to be within our community. I'm going to just stick to our community where there seems to be this uh, stereotype, which is, well, I want my child to become a doctor, a doctor an accountant, yeah, yeah. uh, etc. But there doesn't seem to be this where I want to give back to society. I, I want to become a counsellor or leader. Is Why is that not something which is at the forefront of our community? These after school clubs, for example, if I can stick to that, mm. those are run by volunteers, a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, if you look at community centres run by volunteers, volunteers, and I think that's part of growing up and people are giving time back differently. You make a good point. That is part of that, civic that, duty. Yeah, that's so it's not necessarily you, I, you have to be a councillor or an MP to, to do that. I think, in all honesty, I think a lot of people are giving up some valuable time <coughs> and in a way 
I mean, we've got uh, the winter squad. Um, basically, what they do is we've identified all schools, mosques, and we, we give them salt on, on a frosty morning. And there's a lot of frost about. Mm -hmm. Volunteers go and actually I throw um, salt out on the footpath on the roads adjacent to that mosque or church or school. Mm -hmm. These are done by volunteers. So it's not, it doesn't hit the paper every season, but no. you know, they are giving sure. something back. They're looking after their neighbour, stuff like that. So that goes on. And I think we've got over a thousand registered volunteers now in, in the borough. Right. So, Shoka, the upcoming election, why yeah. is it different to any of the other ones, uh, in your opinion? Uh, this time, it's, it's totally different because I fear it's going to be all about Brexit. Right. And to be honest with you, I think if it was going to be about Brexit, it should have been another referendum. Right. But because it's a general election, and it is a general election, it's going to be so unpredictable what's going to happen because you've got people who traditionally always voted Labour all their lives, might not this time, right. because they feel they betrayed, because they might have wanted to leave, and Labour's leading towards Remain or another referendum. Uh, there's people in the Tories who want to remain, but right. they've come out as clearly as a Leave party. And the Lib Dems have come out, they want to remain, but they've actually totally gone and disregarded the referendum altogether by saying, right. we're just going to revoke Article 50. Right. So all them people who voted, sure. <laughs> don't matter all of a sudden. So, so it, it's a total mix of. So them. other than that fact, what sort of stands you apart from the Conservatives and the Lib Dems? Our policies. Right. Which our our uh, can, manifesto. Right. Can you sort of elaborate some of the, the policies for the Labour government? Yeah, we'd just, abolish... Just, just a summary, I'm not expecting you to go through all... No, there's loads. I mean, I think, oh, okay. I, well, I, I actually ask you to go on Labour's website and check our right, okay. policies out, but some of the ones on top of what my head What are the most is notable points that uh, the viewers should know about? Abolishing tuition fees, right. for the start. Right. Uh, abolishing hospital car parking fees. Right, who, who, is, who is sort of in favour of this? Just to Labour be clear. Party. Just to be clear. Labour right. Party. Okay. okay. Minimum wage, £10. Right, okay. Um, uh, abolishing the bedroom tax, right? Abolishing uh, is it uh, universal credit, right? So I mean, if you look at our policies, I mean, you did not, not as a working class town, it'd be stupid right. not to vote for Labour. But like I said, it's it's trying to get people to look at the policy, sure. And but it's going to be dominated by Brexit. Right. That, that's my fear. You fear that the the actual election is going to be a Brexit election as opposed to it being a general election. Yeah, in so, a general election, you know, right. you take into consideration everything. Right. But I, it's going to be difficult because Brexit are dominated for three years Absolutely. now. Absolutely. It's the timely matter in which it's, it's happening as well. So mm. what, what sort of things uh, do you, um, the viewers need to take into consideration so that they're not just um, voting on a knee-jerk reaction uh, and they are sort of uh, looking deeper into, like you mentioned, the, the conservative policies and the Labour policies. For that well, uh, that's what I'm saying. If they stand back and look at actually the policies, right? because um, these are really important. And even on Brexit, what Labour said is that within three months, they'll negotiate a deal. Mm -hmm. Within six months, there'll be a referendum on that deal, because mm -hmm. previously you didn't know what you were voting mm -hmm. for. Uh, but now you will. So if you decide you want to come out, that's the deal you're coming out on. That that those are the sort of rules and regulations right. that you're going to abide by, or remain. So right. you'll have remain on the paper. But that that's what our policy is. But I'm just fearful that people aren't actually stepping back and looking at all that. Right. Um, but it, I urge everybody to go on the Labour website and look at our policies. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Final kind of note with you, Shoka. Mm. Would just say as a local councillor, you've been a local councillor for a number of years. Yeah. What's your advice to young people out there? My advice to young people is get involved with politics. Uh, I learned from a very young age, and I was going through the same things that you mentioned. Didn't want to know. It was a, like elders did this; they all decided. But I quickly realised the actual decisions are made by politicians. Whether you like it or not, that is the fact. 
So if you want to change anything and you're not happy about it, you've got to get involved with politics. Brilliant. Um, and if, if you want to approach advice. us, absolutely get involved. Thank you very much, Asif, for attending tonight. Thank you, Shoka. Thank you, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you, God bless.